This show is dedicated to helping you strengthen your family tree and live financially free. Welcome to the Marriage, Kids, and Money podcast, everybody. This is Andy Hill, and today we're going to talk about investing with a Roth IRA. There are a lot of folks who listen to the show that are paying off debt, or they're nearing the end of their debt freedom journey, and they are now looking to invest. Well, a Roth IRA is a great place to start, and our guest today, Jedediah Collins, is going to show us how to get it done right. Jedediah is the founder of Rookie to Veteran and the author of Your Money Vehicle. After being signed as an undrafted free agent in 2008, He played seven seasons in the NFL while studying for the certification in financial planning in the off-seasons. Today, Jedediah's mission is to empower students, athletes, and young professionals with the behaviors needed to eliminate the gap between the potential of their goals and the success they desire. In addition to his work, Jedediah is a speaker, a commentator, and most importantly, a husband and father. Welcome to the show, Jedediah. You know, I always get a little humbled after hearing that, but what I love about today is the ability to connect with people like you, someone I share this passion with and is truly out to help people. So I appreciate you uh, introducing me to your community and excited for the opportunity. Absolutely. Thank you so much for being here. Well, look, before we get started into the magical, mystical Roth IRA, why don't we talk a little bit about how you made this transition <laughs> from the NFL to helping people with their money? That's super interesting to me. Tell us about it. It was a, a, a tremendous uh, transition and a journey in and of itself. Um, you know, my my financial acumen began out of fear. It began getting that first NFL paycheck and seeing it kind of walk out the door the same day as so many former players have. But also I came to realize so many people have that kind of relationship with money. We make money to spend money. That's exactly what we did. Now, it was a poor financial decision. It ended up being a good investment. My first check went to getting an engagement ring, and my wife and I have been married for 10 years. But to this day, that was a very awakening moment because I was not going to be any different than the majority. The statistics that have shown professional athletes falling on financial hardships after the game is done, I, as a no-name, undrafted player, even though I played seven years and found success, if I didn't change my relationship with money, I was going to end up in that same category. So I went to a bookstore. I got Rich Dad, Poor Dad. It changed my philosophy as it has millions of others. And today I get to actually critique that book and empower people on their journey to financial freedom. That's incredible. That is that is a great path and something that you went through personally, and now you can help people on their journey. That's awesome. Well, let's talk a little bit about this Roth IRA, because I know as you were probably you know, learning a bit about more what you could do with your money uh, as an NFL player and how you can build yourself, uh, build wealth for yourself, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, investment vehicles probably started to come into play. So let's talk about Roth IRA as one of those. Can you just give us some 101? What is a Roth IRA? So one, I, I, I love that declaration of wealth. And there is a significant difference between rich and wealthy. True wealth, is how many days do you not have to worry about money? And so looking at vehicles, we're going to talk about the Roth account today. That is the destination. That is the freedom you're looking for is creating that wealth. How many days, years can you go without worrying about money? The Roth account today has not been, you know, advertised or is not as common as, say, the 401k. The 401k and the individual retirement account, the IRA, are both pre-tax investment vehicles. They've been around you know, for a little bit longer, let's call it 30, 40 years, and they have been replacing the pension system and social security system as our main form of retirement. Why I stay away from the word retirement, and I think we should all stop using it, is that traditional sense of, of getting to a certain age and walking away with a pension and social security, that dream is gone. We all have to wake up and begin to sit in the driver's seat of our own money vehicles. So as we look at the Roth account, it 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 approaches and attacks 
Well, the 401k and the IRA gave the individual a great advantage. It said, don't tax me today. Tax me years down the road. I understand that advantage. Don't tax me today. I don't have a tax liability. Tax me in my freedom years when perhaps I can be in a lower tax bracket. What the Roth account did was flip that on its head. And it said, well, if I could challenge you not to look at the time and the distance of taxes, but if I could bring it to the forefront and say, I'm okay, I'm comfortable with you taxing me today, just never tax me again. Don't touch these dollars. I have a little analogy and a story to help clarify it. If you imagine yourself as a, a landscaper and you saw three trees, my, my family, my father was a, an attorney by trade, but he loved his yard. We looked at three trees and the traditional way to handle a tree would be to prune it and then plant it in the ground. And then as the plant grows, you prune it before you use it or before people come over and you have a party or something like that. So you prune it twice. You prune it before it goes in the ground and you prune it as it grows. If you look at the second tree, the question is, well, what happens if we don't prune it before we put it into the ground? Let's stick it straight into the ground, let it grow as big as possible. And then before the 4th of July party, that's when we begin to prune and trim our tree down. The third tree you look at and you say, well, what if we had this new offering? It was called Roth soil. And if you could trim and prune the plant, put it into the Roth soil, and somebody could tell you, you never have to worry about trimming it again, that would be an amazing, amazing advantage. And that's exactly what the three types of accounts are. Your traditional taxable brokerage account, you, you tax it before it goes into the dirt, and then you tax it down the road. The tax deferred 401k or IRA, you don't tax it before it goes into the dirt. You tax it at the end before the party or when you want to use it. The Roth account says, I'm going to pr prune a smaller tree, which we'll talk about why that's an advantage, and then I'll let it grow for 20, 30, 40, 50 years, never having to worry about trimming that tree again. And that is a tremendous advantage for young professionals today. That's awesome. Well, let's talk about those tax advantages, because I think that's what you're getting at with this story mm -hmm. is that, yeah, it might be tempting just to flip open your Robinhood app and just start buying, you know, stocks or ETFs because it's quick and easy. But why is it more tax? Why is there more tax advantages to going with a Roth instead of just sort of, you know, buying Tesla right now off of my, my Robinhood yeah. app? And I'm OK with you buying uh, an ETF or Tesla. What we're trying to do is I want to empower you to use money. I use that acronym USE, understand, strategize, and be efficient. This methodology around Roth accounts really dives into that efficiency. So as I look at it today, I realize if I just go onto my Robinhood and I'm in a brokerage account, I'm using after-tax dollars. I went to work, I got taxed, income tax, and now I'm investing those dollars. As it grows, I will have to pay capital gains tax. So the two advantages of why you look to use money is because you're speaking a new language. This language of money is not rocket science. It's not a foreign thing that you can't understand. It's just simply a new language nobody has, has taught you. So that's what we're trying to do with this simple action. Why I don't do financial education anymore is because education in and of itself fails we have to do financial empowerment, which means we give you the education and confidence to go and act. Opening a Roth account is one of my missions and driving factors. You look at opening this account. In my younger career, as a young professional, regardless of how old I am, I've talked to some 15-year-olds, some 25, 35, 45-year-olds. If you look at it and see your career in a way that your income tax is going to continually rise over time, taxing yourself today is an advantage because down the road later in your life, number one, you're always going to be in a higher tax bracket until you walk away and are in freedom and your income goes down. But also number two, who knows where the political climate goes? What, whatever way you sway, the future, if you look at today and this, this stimulus package of trillions of dollars, there is always going to be an association with your taxes, your society choice, that we have to support those types of decisions and events. So if you want to eliminate 
that tax liability and burden, putting it into a Roth account today will look at you at 25 or 45 and still see a 50 year time frame of investment in front of you and say, I don't have to even consider taxes in the future. This is going to be something that I can use in five years tax free. I can use in 25 years tax free. I can even pass it through generations tax free. And that is a major, major advantage. Absolutely. I mean, to your point, I mean, we're in a time right now where we are going into tens of trillions of dollars of, of debt for our for our country. I, obviously, it's a very difficult situation right now. But at some point, we're going to have to get ourselves out of that hole. And that might be with those that are investing on the traditional side. Is that right? The tax code is going to continue to evolve. Whoever is politically in charge has their own agenda. And so, yes, if you look at capital gains taxes, those are ones that will continue to be manipulated. Right now, 15, 20 percent, maybe zero percent for lower income earners. But as you look at it going forward, if it swings one way, people are going to want to approach investors and say, well, we want a little bit more of that cream. We want that earnings that you went and just got. And you even look at income taxes. I can't tell you when you're 72, your income tax code is going to be lower than it is today. I can't predict that. Nobody can. We don't know where that environment is going. And so if you look at it from a transactional, I'm going to capitalize on knowing my income tax bracket today, which is a common misunderstanding around how the progressive income tax code works. And then you look at years of tax-free growth. That is two advantages. But if you look at it just from an emotional decision of, I don't know what the future of taxes holds, I want to make sure I have a third bucket because I have my traditional taxable, my tax deferred, and now my tax free. I have a third bucket to stand on just as your investments, just as your income, your skill set, always diversify. And having those three buckets as a planner puts you at a major, major advantage. So not only do you advocate for diversification within your portfolio, but you advocate for diversification amongst tax strategies as well. 100%. So I say three types of diversification. Within asset classes that says, hey, I want US equities, but I want large, meaty, mid, and small. Amongst asset classes, I don't want to just have US. I want foreign, emerging, fixed income, some real estate. But then in my vehicles, where I'm actually using, I want diversification in there as well. I want to be introduced to health savings accounts, HSAs, 529 accounts, donor advised funds, trusts, all different forms and different vehicles. I love looking at a visual of a parking lot and seeing the destination of freedom and wealth creation and just looking at which vehicle is going to efficiently use money to get me there. I like that. Yeah, I mean, and this is a special call to action for people who have maybe relied solely on the 401k. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like we're saying, building that up, that's a great thing to build over time. But having some diversification uh, with regard to your taxes uh, could be a big deal in the long run. Let's let's talk about uh, who the Roth IRA is for. And I know when you were getting your first salary in the NFL, maybe you, uh, maybe you were over the income limit, but you can tell me, what are the income limits? What are the other limitations that we should be considering? So there is absolutely an income limit, and that is one that you have to adhere to. But there is always loopholes. The tax code is 10% of how you're going to be taxed and 90% around how you can avoid or reduce some of those taxes. Not you know avoid taxes in an illegal way, but to do it legally. I'm a proud American. I want to pay into my tax code and system. I don't want to pay a dollar over what I have to pay. So as I looked at it in the NFL, you look at absolutely being over the income tax limit. So what I would do is backdoor Roth conversions. And so you look at contributing to a traditional IRA and then immediately pushing it into a Roth account. Why this is accessible is because the uh, the cost basis or how to actually tax those dollars hasn't changed. You put in 5,000, you push it over, you have 5,000. And so the taxation of it is not going to be affected. That being said, this is a non-deductible $5,000, 6,000 now, but 
if you look at it that way, you see, even as a professional athlete, I have maxed out my 401k. I want to save and get a little bit extra. I contribute to a traditional IRA because I have no funds in there. This is my first job and my first career. I'm able to then let it drop through the bottom hole and push it straight into a Roth account. This is actually one of those strategies I use with every rookie I talk to, regardless of sport. You have more money than you can spend. You should. Golden rule, spend less than you make. That is very easy as a professional athlete when you make 500000 or a million dollars. So then you focus on what you keep and using these little strategies, these nuggets, if you have a spouse being able to also upload money into that account for their individual Roth account, those are ways to maximize your advantage. But that goes beyond just professional athletes. If I am a young investor and I have the opportunity to do a Roth IRA because I work on my own or a Roth 401k, which are growing day by day as companies see financial wellness and see having to support these new offerings. If I have a Roth 401k, I get another advantage because I don't have the same limit of contribution. Now I can do a Roth 401k up to that $19,500 limit in 2020. That's great. So there's a lot of different routes for people to take to save on taxes and also to grow efficiently from a tax standpoint too. Let's say let's say we're in a tough situation right now with what we're going through and somebody like has money in their IRA and they say, "Hey, I want to I want to take some of that out. I, I I need it. I need it to live right now." What are the rules around taking your money out of your Roth IRA? So one, I want to address the situation first. If you can afford it, I, this year, I started my own business. My income has dropped to almost zero. With that being said, that means my taxable uh, uh, tax code is at a much lower traditional space than usual. So is right now an opportunity for me to convert some pre-tax to some after-tax Roth? Possibly. Again, this is not advice. This is education and guidance. But if you look at your income having gone down, you look at an IRA and you're maybe a 401k and you say, I can absorb the tax liability today. Right now would be an ideal time to transfer some of that money into a Roth account because your income tax bracket is going to be significantly lower. So the beautiful and magical part about a Roth IRA account is, and I, I love to use the analogy of seeds versus harvesting. Any seeds you plant, any contributions you put into this account can be clawed back out guilt-free. You've already been taxed on them. There's no penalties. There's no restrictions on the seeds you plant. Now, as the, the tree and the harvest begins to grow, the fruit on the branches, those earnings have restrictions on them. They have a 10% penalty uh, within five years, and truly, you can only get around those for extenuating circumstances. Education can help you. Your first-time home purchase can help you. Disability and emergencies and that light can help you. But if you look at it from this sense and say, I want to spend the next five years. I'm going to contribute, contribute, contribute to my Roth. And in five years, I want to have some money for my down deposit on my home. Those dollars I contributed each year, you can absolutely pull back out, leave the earnings in and let the earnings continue to grow while you get to go and double dip and use your deposit uh, that you've put into your Roth account. That seems like a really flexible option, and it seems like it has a lot of advantages. I want to jump back to your point. You said you're jumping into a year where you maybe have very little income or almost no income. If you were to transition, transfer, well, I'm going to use the wrong terms. If you were to transition your traditional IRA uh, to uh, to a Roth this year, if you did that below the standard deduction, would you realize no taxes on that money this year? So if I had zero income yes. and I had $10,000 in an IRA, yeah. I would then take it out, be taxed on it. And so I would be converting it into a Roth IRA so it would not be penalized. Yes, I would. Ah, see, I don't know under the standard deduction. I would assume that 
you know, and I don't like to assume yeah. that would be one I'd have to double check sure. on. Sure. Yeah. I was but, just wondering because, like, if you made, let's say, the, I think the standard deduction is 24000 something like that now. So if you. 12, well, that's for married. That's for married. So it's 12000 okay. a piece. Oh, so yeah. Let's say it's 12000 So if you move 12000 from your traditional IRA to your Roth IRA and you made $0. And that's your that only be, income. That would be your income. Kind of makes sense, but out. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. That, that, something yeah. to think about <laughs> that would be one yeah that would be one i would double check with the cpa on absolutely I mean, that's 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 right and that is what we're going to be making sure everybody knows especially during the show at the end of the show make sure to speak to your professional uh, both on the taxes side as well as your financial professional because we are making generalities here and we want to make sure that you yeah. nobody knows specifically your situation right now um so these these are really helpful so you started to talk about the backdoor roth and that's a really interesting way to get into a Roth IRA if you are above the limits. Uh, let's talk about, you know, let's say somebody's intrigued right now and they're saying, hey, I, I need to get one going. Where's the best place to open up a Roth IRA account? And so this is going to be at any of the, the brokerages you currently use. You mentioned uh, Robinhood, uh, Personal Capital, Fidelity, Vanguard. All of these are offering Roth accounts because of the tax benefit and tax benefit ramifications of it. Where you need to look is what is most important to you as you open these accounts? Do you want something with free trades? Do you want something with low expenses on the actual investments? That's a good point right there. I put money in my Roth. I'm done. That is not the case. The Roth is the vehicle you need to then go and invest those dollars. So that is the first transaction. A Roth account, similar to a brokerage account, is not the investment. You need to then go choose where you want to allocate those dollars. And we'll talk about that here more in a second. But as I look at it and say, which platform do I want to use? That's 100% a me question. If I'm comfortable in a bid building a relationship with other places, maybe where my company 401k is or where my brokerage account is, that is fine. If I want to launch into a new offering, people are bidding on your business. So find something that is meeting your needs, focusing on the controllables. What am I paying in fees? What am I paying in transactions? What am I paying in expenses? And seeing a platform that will give you exactly what you want to go from there. What, what are some of the fees I should be looking out for? I know there's lots of different fees and some of them can be almost hidden, right? So what are the ones we should be yeah. looking for when we're, when we're opening on a Roth IRA? So you should be looking for, number one, a transaction fee to open the account. Some, some companies will charge one of those. Uh, anytime you make a purchase or a trade, those always are used to always come with a fee. There are a lot of offerings that have eliminated those. The internal expense ratio, if I am buying an ETF or a mutual fund, what is that manager being paid to make the selection? If I am buying an individual stock, I'm not paying anyone to do that. I'm making the decision. But anytime somebody else is making the decision, there is an internal expense ratio typically referred to as basis point. That's a confusing because it's a, a percentage of a percentage, 100 basis points equals 1%. And so as you look at that, those fees have been driven down where it used to be 1% standard. You look at companies like Vanguard who have forced the uh, industry to push these dollars down. There are two, per, two basis point, four basis point, even zero basis point index funds out there today. And the last one would be something called a load fee. So a load is as I make the purchase into a fund, into an ETF or a mutual fund, I am being charged upfront for just the uh, ability to access this fund. I would steer away from any investment that has a load fee today because you simply don't need it. Down the road, when you want to get into some of those exclusive VIP offerings, we can talk about what the upfront charge would be there. But similar to a credit card, if your credit card charges you $100 a year just to have one, are you making up for it in those rewards? Probably not, unless you're spending a ton of money. An investment in a mutual fund is just the same. You should not be paying up front to enter one because there are a ton of investment options out there that offer no load and very low to free ex internal expense ratios. That's a really good point. And, and you brought up a good point is, 
you don't just put your money in the Roth IRA and let it sit there, right? I, I've heard about people who just leave it in that money market for years, and then they're like, well, it hasn't grown very much. So talk to me about where, how we should be diversifying. I know everybody's situation is very different. What are the categories yes. or things that we should be looking out for with regard to investing? So I And I do. I've talked to a, a few clients who have wake up in 5, 10, 25 years, and you just look at those dollars, and they're not gone. Though they have lost to inflation, they've definitely lost opportunity costs. So where to begin investing? This is what is so powerful about the investment world today. Uh, Jack Bogle, the founder of Vanguard, came out with a strategy called an index fund. He was laughed at 30, 40 years ago, and today he is seen as an icon because he has empowered the individual investor. He has removed the number one and chief hurdle that is emotions. If you can remove your emotions through planning and through strategy, you will be far ahead of the game. So what an index fund does is says, I don't know, I can't tell you, I don't have the time, the expertise, or really the want to figure out which specific company or fund is gonna beat the market. An index fund simply says, I want to be a part owner, which buying a stock makes you a part owner of every company within that aspect of the industry. Now, we hear terms like the S&P 500. That is 500 of the largest companies in America. You hear the Russell 3000. That is 3000 companies in America. Now, when we start to look at foreign ventures, there are indexes that have every publicly traded company outside of America in them. And so with one selection, you can have a globally diversified, very low expense ratio investment. And that just simply says, I see where we are today. I believe in the capitalistic environment. I believe it is designed to produce a profit and that profit will create wealth for myself. So in 5, 10, 50 years, the market will be higher than it is today. That is a bet I am willing to take. That is the entry point for people in the investment world is looking at where can I find a globally diversified index fund. And then from there, as we build up our portfolio as you know, a hundred, a thousand, five thousand dollars turns into fifty thousand, a hundred thousand dollars, then we begin to talk about that diversification. And we start to look at maybe now we have individual investments into each of those sectors. We have a, a selection of the US, a selection of the foreign, a selection of bonds, a selection of cash, and how we divide those up, because then we have some flexibility as we get into higher level planning around tax loss harvesting or reallocating and things like that. But to begin having that globally diversified index fund is essential and is a great, great first step. Excellent. Well, that, that's a great place to start, everybody. So there's somebody listening right now. We've told them a lot of information about the Roth IRA, and they really want to make that first step right after this interview. What is the first thing they should do to get this started? Well, if you want to learn more, Chapter 10 in Your Money Vehicle is centered around the Roth account. It also gives you action items around where to go and what to buy. Again, I am not affiliated. I'm not looking for uh, kickbacks. I just love to give people specific action items. And so what I would challenge you to do is right after this, Google, what are the largest index funds in the world? You're going to find a variety of them. Some of them will be on the platform that you are already investing on. Those are the ones you should start to research and look into. But again, looking at your criteria, I know I want to take my first leap and my first big step into investing. I want to own every publicly traded company in the world. And that is such an amazing, amazing thought and action. So Google where you want to start to deliver, what is your platform and start to invest. I love dollar cost averaging to get started. So commit to $100 a month, $1,000 a month, whatever you can commit to. You will see the eighth wonder of the world, the idea of compound interest start to work for you over time. And if you open your Roth account, you choose one of those index funds and you commit to a, a number you are comfortable with, you will be headed in the right direction and begin driving your money vehicle. I love it, man. This has been a great interview. Thank you so much for your time hey. today, Jedediah. I appreciate it. Where can people connect with you and not only read chapter 10, but all of the other chapters of your uh -huh. book? 
So one, you can get the book, Your Money Vehicle on Amazon. My name's Jedediah Collins. You can come to JedediahCollins.com, but I am on all social platforms at JedCollins45. YouTube and LinkedIn is just under my name, Jedediah Collins. What I ask is if you heard something and thought it was worthwhile, you have a question, you have an opportunity that says, hey, I like that you said this, but what about the next thing? That's how I grow. Your money vehicle is the first 10 questions to begin your financial journey. Level two, level three are drafted, ready, but they are always being edited based on your responses. So I love feedback. Connect with me. Talk to me. Let me figure out how to empower you, which is giving you the confidence to act and to actually go and adjust your plan. I mentioned I criticized Rich Dad Poor Dad earlier where that book I felt limited was it didn't give me actions. Andy, what I love is you are focused on telling people, go do this, not because it's gonna benefit you, not because you're selling something, but because you understand, you strategize, and you are efficient with your money. Your money vehicle will give you the first 10 planning questions for you to approach. Excellent. Well, I appreciate your time today and everybody pick up this book. If you're motivated by what you heard today, I'm sure the book is gonna be just as good. So thank you so much, Jedediah. Have a great day. Enjoy. Thank you.